And this one. And it broke. Oh no, because they're enemies now. <laughs> Attacking the drill. Uh, oopsie. Hello everyone and welcome back to RimWorld. This episode I actually do not have a notepad document open of things I'd like to get to. Does that look like a red mustache to you? <laughs> I thought maybe Senra was rocking this like red mustache, but whatever. Anyway, I don't have a laundry list this episode except for maybe two things that I was thinking of. One is that I do believe we're going to need to expand our base. <laughs> uh, this is kind of small, isn't it? Especially for all of our colonists. So I planned out maybe we can wall this off and maybe put some more growing zones in here. Mine through here so that it it's accessible and hopefully it is safe from oncoming raiders if I do need to claim this land we can always put a wall here and then I guess mine out this mountain so they can go around and we can also claim this area I think right now it might be a good idea to start building into this mountain we do have to be wary of infestations but maybe with the sheer amount of colonists that we have it won't be a big deal <laughs> I'm not quite sure but I do like the idea of planning around the main dining room slash rec room. And something else that I was thinking about doing, <laughs> so much for not having a laundry list, right? Um, sprucing up their bedrooms a little bit, just putting in some dressers, wardrobe, teddy bear to make these start looking a little nicer. I was looking at this textiles database mod that I have and sorting by beauty. And ignoring all of these gems, we're not going to build much out of gems. I would like to build things out of bone ash. I think that's a really good idea, but I think we need a smelter for that. And I'm also not 100% sure that it's available for medieval times. Mm, I remember in 1.0, there was a patch for bone ash to be available in medieval research, but, but failing that, we do have iron wood that gives a plus four to beauty. And I'm pretty sure we have Quite a bit of ironwood that's what i've been making a lot of furniture out of so let's go ahead and put in some furniture made out of ironwood oh we have no ironwood <laughs> so much for that okay not a problem i'm pretty sure i have a management job set up for ironwood let's see here i do not okay let's make one just for ironwood then yeah 500 so we can target 500, that should be fine. Count all on map. So we have 933 around. Okay, I'll look for them. They're probably just not in our stockpile. They're scattered around the map or something. And we can calculate based on actual path, sure. And let me raise this. Wish I could kind of drag. Uh, but let me raise it up to the top here. Below regular trees. Cool, okay. I don't see any ironwood. I don't know. I don't know where that 900 came from. <laughs> probably like right under my nose. Oh, here's a bunch of wood. It's regular wood. I'm probably just blind to it. Not a problem. Oh well. Oh, make mage spell dirt devil. So that's done. That means we must have quite a bit, right? Because we we made more than one. Let's see here. Dirt devil, dirt devil, where might you be? Here you are. Okay, right. No, we just made two. Let's see, who wants Dirt Devil? So we want a mage that, that has a lot of mana to spare. So Dizzy, unfortunately Dizzy is keeping up about three undead people right now. So I don't wanna give him a maintenance spell. Seth's prediction should be draining his mana a lot more. Do we have a mana surge going on? No, he just has a ton of mana. That's actually really impressive. Maybe I'll give Seth some points into prediction and he can learn one of these Dirt Devils. Right, okay, and then who else do we have who can learn a dirt devil? Well, Mavris, but I would like my healers to have plenty of mana if they can. Krissa does have mana. Okay, I'm going to give Krissa this other dirt devil. So Krissa's our blood mage. Most of the blood mage spells use blood as a resource. So this is great that she can actually cast mana spells, um, especially like maintenance spells like this. So yeah, Krissa, you cast dirt devil and who else was it? Seth, you too, on auto, please clean up this nasty mess. <laughs> clean up this nasty mess. Wine merchant, hello. Ooh, there it goes. Can you see it? <laughs> I'm not quite sure if my recording can pick it up, but it, it's picking up um, all of this mess. Is it going to clean up the blood? It is. Oh, thank goodness. Yay. Cool. Okay. Um, I'm not really interested in this wine merchant, but I might as well go see uh, if there's anything that we can trade them. 
Grapes or wine? No thanks, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good for now. We do have some fermenting barrels in here and wine barrels too that we can set up eventually once this is mined out. Shuttle crash. Shuttle crash in my medieval times? All right, sure. <laughs> I'll accept. Oh, I wonder if I want these guys to be you guys. <gasps> I have to rescue them first. Okay, I'm gonna rescue them. And if they survive and join the colony, I will make them you guys. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so Marta's recovered and decided to leave. That's fine. I'm also thinking I might need to send out a hunting party. We only have three days worth of food and our fridge is getting scarily empty. Maybe I can plant some more rice or something over here. Uh, maybe just like, yeah, like a big field of something and we can replace this with uh, something later. Now, what do I want? What about just like a ton of corn? Yeah, a ton of corn and also, Beth, come up here and you're going to accelerate time on this corn if you can. Right there. Thank you. Oh, but we did get some iron wood, so let me go ahead and set up their bedrooms. All right, so I set it up like this. We've got a dresser, we've got an end table, and a wardrobe. <laughs> this is a lot of furniture that is never going to get done, but it's nice to set it up anyway. <laughs> so this muffalo getting pregnant has reminded me that I think it might be time to set up more jobs um, for our livestock. So let's see what we have tamed and I will set up those jobs. Housekeeper cat, I am going to turn on to be tamed. So whenever there is a housekeeper cat that wanders into the map, it will hopefully automatically be designated for taming through the manager's desk and I won't have to see it and react and tame it myself. I love housekeeper cats. They are so freaking cute and they clean up for you. They haul for you. They're basically the best. <laughs> Where'd they go? Here they are. And I think there's a setting that the housekeeper cats don't actually breed. So it doesn't really matter what I set the target counts to. I'm just gonna say two female, two male. That should be fine. Don't butcher excess livestock, no need to. Okay, I think I'm done. So I set up a job for Alex, Rottweilers, Meadow Aves, Muffalo, Pegasi, Ram, our housekeeper cats, Kodos, Beetles, Ground Hunters, Forest Fairies, and of course our cowgirls, which are already set. So that should help make sure that their breeding does not take over the entire colony. While doing that though, I did notice that there are a bunch of meadow avies on the map here. And I would kind of like to tame one because we have one already. This one is a female. So why don't we get um, a guy AV and have a little AV farm <laughs> in addition to our, um, our farm of everything else? <laughs> I think that could be fun. Let's see, what color do I like? This brown is nice, but it's a female. And this orange is cool. What about this one? No, pink is really cute. Let's do the pink one. Oh, here's some ironwood. Oh yeah, okay. Kind of blends in, doesn't it? That's why I couldn't see it. Kind of looks like these rocks. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Oh, Nyaz joins. Okay, Nyaz, you are not Nyaz. You are Lily, our blood elf blood mage. <laughs> our second blood mage, awesome. Welcome, Lily. She doesn't really have a backstory, but that's fine. She is pretty, too smart, very good at shooting animals and social. So it's very good to have you on board, Lily. I'm so sorry you didn't have any clothes on spawn, but we should have some clothes for you in here, I assume. And Stanislav joins. Welcome, Stan. But you're not Stan. Who are you? Balazar Terrorgeist Atheal. Ooh, spooky. I was told to make him look as intimidating as possible. I hope this works. So Terrorgeist is our forsaken death knight. He's a psychopath, a bit abrasive, a night owl, and tough. Very good at melee, of course he is a death knight, along with construction and crafting and a little bit of passion and social, you know. He's terrifying, but he likes to hang out with people, I guess. <laughs> That's fine. Welcome, Terrorgeist. It is good to have you on board. I really need bedrooms for these people, don't I? <laughs> yeah, I do, all right. Well, more people on board means more people mining, I assume. Research finished smithing, cool. Let's see what we got in here. Just this fueled smithy, but oh, that's nice to have. 
Okay, yeah, just got the low food notification. I think it's time to go out hunting. Now, exactly what we're going to hunt, I'm not quite sure. Let's see what we have here. Uh, I can sort by meat amount. Ooh, these Elex give a ton of meat. Yeah, yeah, we should probably fight these Elex. That's going to be kind of scary. Are they going to, they're gonna attack us? Maybe not, actually. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so in that case, let me set out a little hunting party. Sophie, Hera, Matchlock, Micah, Amber, and Lilac with your <laughs> short bows, not a problem, and Dave. Come on over here. We're gonna we're gonna get these Elec so that we can have some meat. Sorry if you were doing something important. I have I have no idea what <laughs> what everyone is up to, honestly. Alright, and then come over here. I'm just gonna turn on I was going to turn on Drafted Hunt, but I would still like to get this Elec tamed. Assuming the entire pack does not go Manhunter on me. <laughs> let's find out. All right, let's attack this guy or whatever. I mean, I'm not in love with the idea of taming this Elec. We have one Elec and that's enough. So they're not like elephants. If I was doing this with a bunch of elephants, uh, that would be bad news. <laughs> we would be dead. The entire pack would come in and ram us over. Good job. Okay, looks like we're all good. Okay, sorry for killing your entire family. <laughs> would you like to join our colony? I'll consider not putting the Elec meat inside your kibble, but I can't promise anything. That should help a lot of our food issues, I think. Oh yes, Terrorgeist is a night owl. That's right, I need to fix his schedule, and then I will also fix Allian and Lily's. What else is going on here? Unhappy nudity, Lily still doesn't have any clothes. Where is Lily? Just go into the bathroom in, uh, in the prison, that's fine. What the heck is this? 200 calcium carbonate, okay. Or <laughs> whatever that's for. Um, Marta, you are not gonna pull a Betty and decide not to join our colony and just hang out here. No, I don't know how to get rid of you though. That's the problem. <laughs> Whatever, whatever, just don't take our medicine. So I was thinking one way to get a lot of wood, besides of course cutting down these trees, which we do have a limited amount of, to be honest. I was thinking maybe we can replace these wooden walls with marble walls to get that beauty factor in. And then we get this wood back to use up here and then just kind of like make it a cycle, like make it out of wood replace with marble, make it out of wood, replace with marble, etc. Right? And we can do that for a lot of this stuff. And then we don't have a super flammable base. So that's actually shooting two birds with one stone. Might be a good idea. I think I'm gonna do that. Do we have the labor for it? Absolutely. I mean, what are these guys doing, honestly? Partying in our crappy little rec room? Maybe I should give them some more rec. Let's see, what do we even have? We have quite a bit of stuff, don't we? All right, well, we have the horseshoe pin. We don't have a hoopstone ring, I don't think. Or I'll put, but that's like the same thing, isn't it? Like horseshoe pin is dexterity. Wooden hoopstone is dexterity, yeah. And game of war is cerebral. So let's put this down somewhere and make it out of, let's make it out of something pretty. That way it counts as a, uh, a beauty item. So garnet, sure. Let's make a garnet game of war. Do I put it on a table? No, I guess not. Um. How does this work? <laughs> I'll put it there. And then I think it needs some chairs. Let's look at Rimkia. No, nothing cool. I do know that Rimkia has more to research, so maybe we'll do that later too. Let's just do some simple stools there around that game of Ur. And then what else do we have? An archery target. Oh, we have this stuff already. That's right. The marimba is what kind of music appreciation? Okay. Three stones game is cerebral play. Tribal lore fire. Ceremonial tribal lore fire. Participants pass on ancient knowledge and helpful wisdom through stories or practice storytelling on their own. Oh, that's really cool. It's cerebral play, but maybe it does like other stuff too. Maybe it like teaches people. Does it go inside or outside? Let's put it outside. It feels like this is something that would go outside. By the shit pile? No, let's put it. <laughs> oh dear, um, let's just put it there. Sure. No, that's a terrible place. Let's put it up here by the rocks. Yes, <laughs> in this rock pile, sure. Uh, what else do we have? Dice log. And that can be fun. What is this? Cerebral play again, but I don't know. It's a variety. Let's do it. 
a bone dice log. We can put this by the bones also. Yeah, put this here. Okay, and then we've got a festival game and a festival tent. We can make like a whole freaking circus up here. <gasps> That'd be cool with our Elix and stuff. Yeah, I like it, but it costs a lot. 100 cloth, 175 wood. We don't have that right now, so I will pass on that. But let me go ahead and replace some of these walls with marble. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and use the replace tool here. Marble blocks. Yeah, I just do that. Holy crap, that's a lot. And it's like frozen because it's mad at me for having tried to do that. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, cool. And I'm actually going to cancel the bathroom and the doors. Those can stay wood. Yeah. Okay, let's let's see how that works. <laughs> I have no idea. A prison break, huh? All right. I'm just gonna draft up everyone. So, you know, let's all hang out in this general vicinity. <laughs> Oh, geez, this isn't good for our prisoners. Not at all. Okay, so this chick is running out. I just expect them to come into my stockpile room to pick up weapons. Yeah, that's what she's doing. Okay. I hear Tara and her fire bow. <laughs> so Tara, I actually noticed it is a fine fire shot longbow. So it shoots fire. Not actually um, ideal to shoot fire inside of our stock room, first of all, <laughs> uh, much less in a wooden stock room. So Tara, I kind of want to just like not have you shoot that fire longbow. That'd be pretty cool. Or whatever, you do you. All right, here comes Mags. Did we get everyone? No, but whatever. All right, Haiti, capture this person. Lilac, capture Mags. How are you guys doing up here? Fabris, would you like to come in and maybe help heal? All right, you guys are free to go. You guys are free to go. Hey, I think we got it. All right, Seth, go ahead and capture. Krissa, you can capture. Who else is here? Um, Daniel's capture. I think that's it. Now, I did notice that these wardrobes are done, so I'm going to fix the contents a little bit. Do not allow cultist attire and only decent hit points. I think it's time that we add more armor racks as well. How are our crafts? Oh wow, okay, so I actually need to increase these. Totally missed that. That's great though, that's good news. And what about here? So more arbalists. Yep, mm, okay, that works. Oh, and a commenter mentioned to put drop-off zones outside all of the entrances here. So mount drop spot there, there, and there, I think. I think that's all of it. And then I guess here, right? Okay. And I also need a doormat here, but we don't really have that much leather or cloth. Yeah, not enough for another doormat, so I will wait. I'll just have to remember. I am low key worried about our society just collapsing in on itself with the sheer amount of people. Not enough food, not enough bedrooms, everyone just being miserable. So I have to stay on top of that. I have to stay on top of food and happiness, I think, along with, of course, their gear, which is more resources. That's the fun part of RimWorld. That kind of reminds me of the game Banished, where whenever you add a whole bunch of new people, it sort of starts a chain reaction of terrible things happening. <laughs> so I really have to be careful about how I'm doing things, so we'll we'll see. I'm going to make a separate one of these food prep stations just so we can stay on top of cooking. I think that should help a lot. Oh, and we got our second Alec, awesome. That's great. Then let's set that to herbivores and I think we're good to go. So Marta's moving is at 92%, like she's fine. She just doesn't want to go. Can't say I blame her though. Oh, we have people who are ready to be recruited. Let's see, who do we have? Unsteady Sardine. <laughs> That's a cool name, good for you. And these two people are pretty close, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off and see. And actually, Versi, I'm gonna need you to... Oh shoot, the plumbing is also being replaced with marble. No, 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 no. Cancel that. Uh, how do I cancel that? <laughs> Yeah, this one, select similar. Yeah, we don't need marble plumbing. I mean, as exquisite as that is, we don't need it. <laughs> we should be fine. Anyway, Versi, would you like to make this 
food prep station. I think that's a little more important right now. Oh, two more people have enough friends to be recruited. So we've got three here and these guys aren't terribly close. Okay. Okay, we got this person and this one and it broke. Oh no, because they're enemies now. <laughs> Attacking the drill. Uh, oopsie. <laughs> we just made some enemies. Okay, not a problem. Um, before we start a war, let me go ahead and change uh, change these guys. So we've got Ledriel and uh, Borbrust. <laughs> Crap, we made <laughs> we made some enemies today. Usk is our new kobold paladin. Usk is like Malcolm X crossed with Adam Sandler, fighting to free the kobold race from the clutches of domineering greater evil races, but making super great observational jokes about rocks. <laughs> so welcome Usk, it's good to have you. Very good at melee as you are paladin, mining, animals, and medical. You can't clean, but that's all right, welcome. And then next we have this chick who is now Carson Ziegenhagen. Carson is our new goblin bard. He's very good at melee, cooking, animals, and artistic, which is really nice. We definitely need to make more production tables for all these people. <laughs> Carson's fluff is that he is a bard goblin reseeking out his musical roots in the rim world after a career enforcing the will of the, of the glitter world elite. Hope this character makes it into the series. Congratulations. <laughs> Welcome, Carson. Unfortunately, Luce is attacking you, so... Oh, and these two might be attacking also. Crap. Um... Well, maybe we don't have to kill them. Maybe we can just injure them and then save them, and then they won't be so... so mad at us, you know? Maybe? <laughs> Colonist needs rescue. Carson already? Oh my gosh! <laughs> he, like, just joined. <laughs> Okay, um, this sucks. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh no, we've got uh, someone magic missling against us. This is terrible. All right, everyone, just like come in here and, and, and do what you need to do. I can't see what the heck is going on because of all these people. Who got an infection? Oh, whatever, whatever. Okay, um. Yes, go get him. Katie, would you like to rescue this person? Let's see. You can finish her off, strip, fire, melee, or capture. I would like to rescue. Oh, I get it. Okay, so we can capture, and then maybe we can release them. That sounds good to me. Here, capture this person. You guys, come on in here. Uh, capture this person. Yeah, get unsteady sardine. I know, we were buddies like two seconds ago. All right. Jack, you can capture. Chief angered, yet. Yeah. No shit. Um, okay. Well, we got some weapons, that's nice. Oh dear, what a mess. And here I was so excited that we finally got everything all clean. Well, so much for recruiting guests as our <laughs> reliable way of adding colonists. Um, I guess I should have seen that coming. I mean, it was telling me that the chief was mad at me for having done that so often, but I was ignoring him. I was like, what's the worst you can do? Well, I guess a uh, revolt on us. <laughs> That's fine. Okay, I think, yeah, what I'm going to do... Oh, uh, what do you guys think I should do? Should I release them to go back to their homes, maybe get some goodwill back? Or should I keep them imprisoned and maybe sacrifice them? I will let you guys decide. Okay, I think with that, I'm going to end this episode. I don't really have much to say at the end of this episode, so as usual, I super appreciate you guys watching, and I will talk to you later. Bye!